when did you know that this woman was going to happen? Let's start there. It kind of surprised us. I ran over here just in time. Well, mid-afternoon, we were finishing up some other work here at the Capitol, and we got word that they had reached an agreement that people thought they could could live with here. This is a big day. Um, it's kind of happy, but also we're kind of confused as to what really the details are. It's a little bittersweet, I would say, yes. because it does some very good things. It keeps a basic health care program for Minnesotans in place, GAMC. It keeps Minnesota care intact, which is really important for working Minnesotans, especially those working Minnesotans who don't have children, who are potentially going to be knocked off of Minnesota care. It also gets an agreement from the governor that he's not going to go after this program again through any veto or unallotment type of mechanism. So those are important wins in this. I think the, the concern is around um, doctors and nurses who are not in these coordinated care organizations may have some challenges with payments. It makes you and so, worry too if this couldn't actually make work for more man hours for them. Yeah. I could almost see more staff for this kind of yeah. coordinated care. Yeah, I, I think the you know it it depends on who is providing the care. You know, it's probably um, more for nurses and high-level nurses and physician's assistants and people like that because if you're moving towards a preventative model, and that's the goal here, healthier people, more prevention, more stability, then yes, I think that, you know, it could have an effect on the emergency room if we're moving, trying to move people away from the emergency room to that coordinated care, but everybody agrees that is the direction we have to move in the state, is towards coordination of care and prevention. And I'm speaking of accounted for the tremendous growth in the first place of GAMC. Is it really healthcare growing? Or is it the number of people growing and joining the, the, the roles? Yeah. Are we really growing the role too at the same time with our economy? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think that both of those things can be having a real effect here. That, you know, overall, we have seen poverty grow in Minnesota over the last number of years. And we have to be working on that issue. We've seen poverty grow in the suburbs in Minnesota. And a lot of people who are in that position do have to rely on something like GAMC, General Assistance Medical Care. So I think that there are a number of factors there. Um, you know, we do also know that it's a, it, when um, a lot of things happened with people who suffer from mental illness and they don't have access to stable, stable care, that that can create kind of a downward cycle for them and for their families. And so our hope is here once again that we're creating a new model that's going to be helpful to those Minnesotans and to their families. Well, we hope that actually in the delivering of health care in a more cost-effective way through coordinated care, that, that this will not add to that. There are other factors out there that are adding to the cost of increased care, more the issues of uninsurance and other things, but hopefully because we're going to continue to cover this population, that will have less of an effect. If general assistance medical care had gone away, it would have had a significant effect on people's insurance rates. I was surprised to see how many vets I met in yes. the movement that were yep. using it. Yep. And that's where I think, you know, I, I, I can appreciate what the governor has to say, but the reality is we still have eight to 10,000 veterans who get their care wow. through general assistance medical care and are not always eligible for Veterans Administration type care for a variety of reasons, but they serve their country and we need to be sure that we are taking care of them. You, you mentioned the wins. What are some losses? Well, I think this issue of providers and payments is a real, you know, when the governor talked about that we had a reduction in provider payments in the bill that we tried to override of 50%, this has actually potentially a larger reduction. So I really wish the governor would have been accurate about that, um, but, you know, that is something we're going to be watching. It's also a very fast movement to coordinated care, and so we're going to have to be watching that to make sure it works well. Okay, thanks you guys. Thank you.